right, welcome to the first Earth Science uh, podcast of the year. We'll see how these go. Um, please remember as you're watching this, you are in control. Uh, if you are bored, you can pause it, take a break. If you missed something, you can use the slider and go back and try to catch what you missed. You're in charge. Please use this uh, to your advantage, okay? Um, and just fill out the handout as you go. Um, so this uh, first topic is simply on using the scientific method. Uh, you've probably been talking about this since you were in elementary school. Um, we think of it as a series of steps uh, in science, um, but really nobody sets out to just do this series of steps for no reason. The reason any scientist uses the scientific method is because they have something has struck them as being interesting or they don't understand it or, or whatever and they want an explanation and they can't find one and so they use this scientific method to help them answer a question or solve a problem okay so uh, that being said the first step step one in the scientific method is simply to discover a really compelling question that you want an answer to something that really strikes your interest um, and you don't understand it and you want to. So maybe it's something like this, okay? Maybe you're driving to work one day and you see something like this as you are driving in your car. Aw, oh, come on now. meteorite okay and that meteorite hit Russia just last year you might remember it um, and so that might spur all kinds of questions in your head so perhaps you see that and you're like wow what are meteor what are, what was that made of what what did it do is it made of explosive materials are made of gold what is, is there anything in there that's useful yeah maybe there's gold in it maybe you want to know could I get rich off finding meteorite bits so um, the next step then if you've got this question that you don't understand is uh, you don't know the answer to is to simply research it maybe someone else has already figured out the answer to your question and can save you a lot of trouble so why research the question you just want to see if it already has an answer. Um, if it already has an answer, then you can save yourself a lot of time. Uh, or if it doesn't already have an answer, you can just see if there's any helpful information out there uh, that can help you as you try to develop your own answer to the question. Now, if you wanted to research a question, what are some ways you would do that? Uh, in the olden times, we'd go to the library, and you can still do that. Uh, that's a great place to go. Uh, the books can help you. The librarians can help you because they know different sources of information very well. Um, but our easiest and most convenient source for research uh, now is the internet. Google is your friend. Uh, you can go there and, and find out all kinds of information. You have to be really, really, really careful with the internet because a lot of the times the information you receive is not the best so you've got to really look at your sources and make sure they're good reliable sources but it's a great place to go for information okay uh, you can go to teachers professors all kinds of places now once you've gotten a question and once you have done a little work and found out well i still don't really have an answer to my question even though i researched it so i'm gonna have to go further that's when you start thinking to yourself, based on what you've learned, you try to figure out a possible answer to your question. Well, you say, I think there might be, based on what I've read, gold in certain meteorites. And if I found a lot of those things on the ground, I could, I could from outer space, I could make some money. So maybe that's a possible answer uh, to your question. I think there's gold in meteorites, okay? That is called a hypothesis. Um, it used to be phrased as an educated guess as to the answer to a question. They try, we are trying to get away from that idea 
and thinking of it more as simply a possible explanation for what you've seen or, or, or what you've learned. So let's try to get rid of that and think of it more as a possible explanation that you've come up with based on your research and, and what you know. Um, the other thing about a hypothesis is that it is testable. It is not just some stupid thought or some, uh, let's say you said, all right, I think that meteorites are magic and they are thrown here by leprechauns and therefore there's going to be gold. I mean, you can still test if there's gold, but you really can't test if the meteorites are magic or not. That is not a testable hypothesis. That is just pie in the sky. Magic is not testable. That's kind of what makes it magic. So um, you really have to stick to just answerable, testable questions, okay? So we can't kind of go off into the supernatural and stuff like that, okay? Now, once you've got a hypothesis, you're like, okay, I think there might be gold and meteorites, then you might design an experiment to test that. Maybe your experiment is I'm going to go travel to Russia and look for bits of meteorite that fell from the sky on this day or, or whatever. You design an experiment to test your hypothesis, okay? Um, then, step five, you actually do your experiment. You go and collect pieces of meteorite and maybe you would test them to see what's in them. Is there gold in them? Are there other things in them of value? You actually do your experiment. You test the um, the question and, and see what you come up with. Uh, what this means is you will be collecting data of some kind. Uh, data is just bits of information. There's a couple of different kinds of data you might collect. You might collect qualitative data or quantitative. Qualitative data means you're looking at an object or something and you're describing it. You're using words to describe it. It's uh, purple, it's green, it's, you know, large, small, but no numbers associated with it. Whereas quantitative data uses actual numbers. So, for example, if you're looking for gold and meteorites, maybe yes or no, it has gold, it doesn't have, have gold, that's kind of a qualitative uh, assessment. But if you wanted to actually measure how much gold is in each meteorite, in grams, uh, for example, then that would be quantitative. You're actually using numbers. You're, you're measuring a numerical piece of information, okay? So qualitative versus quantitative. You're going to take measurements of your data. Now, once you've collected all these measurements, you found a thousand meteorites that had fallen, uh, little bits, fragments of the meteorite, you analyze that data. How could you analyze your data? You might draw a graph of all the data points you've collected. And why would you do this? Well, hopefully that would give you kind of an overall picture of it. And just rather than just having to assess, look at each individual data point, you have this graph that kind of shows you, oh, lots of meteorites have gold in them or almost no meteorites have gold in them. And you have it in one nice picture that you can show to other scientists or other people who are interested. You could also use statistics, and when I say that, I am talking about horror math, okay? You might uh, use statistics to analyze your data, and that just means doing things like calculating an average or, or a mean, which is another word for average. You might say, on average, meteorites have, you know, 0 0.00001 gram of gold in them on average or something like that. And that gives you a kind of a, a nice one number way to describe maybe a thousand data points. You kind of tell where the average is, okay? So those are all ways to analyze data. And finally, once you've done all that analysis, you're ready to draw a conclusion. What does that mean? Well, you reflect back on the hypothesis you made in the beginning. I think meteorites have gold in them, okay? And then you look at your data and say, does my data that I collected and analyzed support that idea? Does it support that idea? So you look at the data you analyzed, does it support your idea, your hypothesis that meteorites have gold or does it not? So you kind of tell, is my hypothesis on the right track or the wrong track? 
we do not, whoops, sorry, we do not ever prove it with certainty because that's the nature of science. Science can always be corrected if we get new evidence. So we seldom use that word, I have proven this beyond a shadow of a doubt because maybe you don't find any meteorites that have gold in them. Does that mean none of them have gold in them? Maybe, but maybe not. So we don't prove it conclusively. We say, well, my hypothesis suggests that meteorites may not possess gold, but someday you might find something that changes that point of view. All right? Now, that's the end of our scientific method. If you were a real scientist, you might also take what you found and publish it so your colleagues could see it and then give their opinion about your research or it might help them answer a question they have. So we're never quite done until we share our hypothesis, our, our results of our experiment with others. Okay, so that's it for the first podcast. Hope you were able to follow along with that. This is kind of a test out. So let me know if you've got problems or concerns and uh, maybe we'll do this again sometime soon. All right. Thank you for watching and I will see you in class. Take care.